Hey guys, Will Patson here again and welcome to another Illustrator CC 2014 release tutorial. Now today I'm going to be showing you something that uh, many of you might not know and that is this sort of section here uh, which is the text that's arcing over and there's a few ways of doing this and I've shown you one way beforehand but I've, I can't remember whether I've shown you this sort certain way which is path uh, text on a path. And that makes it so much easier and looks so much more crisp and it doesn't distort the text like you would if you're using the warp feature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create another artboard on the side here. I'm not using my graphics tablet because um, it's not very strenuous this, but I'm going to write some text down. I'm going to press T. And I'm just going to go um, tutorial and show you that. Just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I should change the font. Yeah, we'll change it. We'll change it to multi-core. That seems okay. Right, so the first thing um, is that I've chosen my font. I've chosen my text. The next thing I want to do is I want to sort of make an arc. And the best way of doing this is to get your circle tool up or uh, your ellipse tool. Just create um, an ellipse from the center. Now, the way I've done this is by pressing shift and alt. So I've created this from the center. And then I've got this shape. And it's got a black fill and no uh, no stroke around it. So I'm going to press Shift and X to reverse that so it's just got a black stroke. So you can see I've got a black stroke here. Now we want to write our text along this. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this up a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and hold down on my type tool. And I'm going to go to type on a path and make sure I'm on there. Now I'm going to click on top of here. And I'm going to just write tutorial. Like so. I can zoom in then and see what I've written. Now you can see this is really small and not very well, so I'm just going to click on here and then press Command Shift and this arrow key here. This is going to bring up the text for me. Now we've got a weird alignment thing here. We need to check out the alignment of our text. So we just need to hover over, or sorry, highlight this here. And then up here we've got this align center, align left and align right. I'm going to press align center. Now you can see that's gone really crazy, so the center of the circle is down here. This is where these parts come into play. We need to move this over here, so it's quite hard to find. But every time I go over here, you'll see a little arrow going to the left right here. I need to click and then move this all the way around to this anchor point here. Then I need to go grab this one and click this one down to here. And then we should have our aligned centered text. Now that doesn't look great and it doesn't look like that yet. So we need to do a few things first. So I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to expand this up a little bit so we can see. We need to make this text sort of bigger by pressing these keys here or just going up to your um, font size and pressing the font size up. And then we need to change the kerning. Now the tracking or the kerning uh, is basically over here. If you press Command T, you'll get this little character panel up. We can change it over here by just pressing here and then going across with it. Or we can just press Alt and then press the key space here. Um, the arrow keys to the right and left. To the right, it'll expand it to the left. It'll make it a bit smaller in the kerning stage. Then we can just go ahead and play with this, make it bigger, tracking it, make it smaller, tracking it, and then seeing whether we like it or not. Now that is basically it. Now, what if you didn't want the set, uh, text on the top? Now this is what a lot of people have asked me: is I don't want the text to be sitting on the top path. What can you do? Well, there's a bunch of features hidden away up here in the type section. So if we press type whilst this is highlighted, then go to, uh, where is it, type on a path. We'll have all these options, but we want to go to the type on the path options. We'll get this little dialog box up here. Now, the effect we have is rainbow. We can ch change the effect and all this. I'm going to press preview CC. We have skew, 3D ribbon, stair, stair step, which is really weird, and gravity. We want rainbow, that looks good. We can also flip this so it's on the inside like so. But if we want to align to the path, we have a load of different uh, sort of settings here. So right now it's on the baseline, and if we chose center, it'll be in the center. If we chose descender, it'll be right above, and ascender, it'll be right below. So we want to choose center so it's in the center of it. Spacing, we can change the spacing to like whatever we want. I just use auto or none. Should I say where is none? There we go. Then press OK. Now we've got that in the center. Now you've got that and you want to make it into a shape. You just do the exact same thing as you normally would, which is Shift, uh, Command and O. 
which will expand it or outline the shape for you. Now that is how you create type on a path. And you can do this with like any sort of path. You can create a path here, create a path here, create a path here. Make sure it's an actual path. And you can start writing on this path. And it'll write. And it'll look really cool. Liam Patterson. Patterson. Like so. And then you can change these bits across whatever you like. And we've got that there, and it looks really strange. But the amazing things you can do with this is, well, the things you can do with it is amazing. And I hope this tutorial helped. I thought I'd just do a quick one because you guys might, uh, like, want to know. I don't know why. But there you go. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.